you know, I mean, just because somebody's from IM and, you know, speaks great English, does great analytics about cricket, does not qualify him for your coach or mentor. Whereas such a talent could be somebody who's a 10 standard fail, but man, he has a record to talk about. Entrepreneurship and especially entrepreneurship by young adults. That's what we're going to cover in today's episode. But let's focus on young adults for just one moment here. Your friends are getting married in this age, you know, in the young 20s or even the mid 20s. And then comes the pressure of your parents asking you for marriage. And of course, their regular quota of grandchildren, four, five, ten, how many ever it is they want. Now, amongst all of this chaos, young entrepreneurs are trying to build a business and trying to make it really, really big. So that is why for all the successful young entrepreneurs out there, hats off to you guys. Seriously, well done. But that's just one in a million. Let's face it. Most of us are young entrepreneurs try to make it big, but we fail. So for all you guys who haven't succeeded yet, try again. Now I know that's pretty cliche. So that's why I'm not the best guy to give you advice on that. Because hey, I'm a young adult as well. I face those same problems and conundrums that you guys do. So how about we hear it from a guy who's been through life like us, who's, who was a young entrepreneur and who's now mentoring people to make sure they don't make the same mistakes he did. So if a young entrepreneur knows his pitfalls or rather the mistakes he's gonna make, maybe you can avoid them and be successful. So here's our interview with Mr. Inian on all these fronts. That was Mr. Inian. He's commonly known as the common sense entrepreneur. His research areas include practical approach towards increasing human potential. He is a mentor, a business coach, and an international speaker. He got his MBA from Bharatiya University, India. He currently has three companies with an international presence with focuses on leadership, health and wellness, and a business coach. He was honored as an industry expert panel discussion moderator, keynote speaker at multiple industries, and he's been awarded many awards. Now that's a bit about our guest. Let's move on to the show. Mr. Indian, thank you so much for being on the show with us. First off, how are you doing, sir? How's lockdown been treating you? Hey, Pranay, thank you for having me on the show. It's been wonderful. I mean, life has been wonderful. Lockdown, I guess there are some challenges, new challenges, all of us are getting used to it. I you know like everybody says, it's a new norm. And uh, I think uh, it has its own pleasures and minuses. I guess we'll all, all of us will get used to it. Well, sir, uh, when I say that, you know, for myself and for the viewers who don't know you as well yet, at least for me personally speaking, when I see your profile, when I, you know, see the things you've done, for me, you're truly an inspiration coming from a background like such as most people who have made it really big from coming from, uh, you know, uh, middle class background. So that's really inspiring for me to hear. And that's why I think, uh, you know, your mentorship or rather, you know, your advice to young entrepreneurs, especially is uh, key, especially at the time when everyone is trying to do or build something of their own. So let's start with you, sir, in the sense of uh, why is mentorship so important to you? So let's start from there. That's, uh, that's an interesting question, Pranay, because um, uh, if you had asked me when I started my career, I would have actually said, I don't need the... Uh, any mentorship <laughs> because uh, see I come from a very simple money class family my father was a teacher in a government school and I come from a small town you know it's a place uh, in Tamil Nadu called Kandur, and I moved to Bangalore after my engineering and MBA and uh, so uh, the only formula till that time was hey you study well you'll get a good job and uh, that sounded good and uh, that's what I followed also also I came here started growing in my career so at that point in time, if somebody had said, hey, you know, uh, do you need anybody's advice? I think I would have said not required because uh, I thought uh, I've already achieved. See, uh, achievement and success is only relative, right? I mean, you know, uh, if uh, let's say, you know, uh, you know, if you're, if you're studying, you're, uh, uh, you know, let's say 75, uh, you scored 75 and something and you're very happy. But when, if you suddenly look at your friend and he scored 78, now suddenly you're not very happy. And uh, otherwise, if you uh, find your friend is this code 72, you're really happy, right? <laughs> and this actually continues, right? It continues, you go to a job, you know, your campus job, you know, you, let's say you get a campus offer of uh, six lakhs and your friend gets only at five and a half, you're very happy. But if your friend, you know, friend gets six and a half, although your income is the same, you know, you're not happy. And I was like that. Because my comparisons were just from my college, my classmates, my friends, my relatives, who are more or less from my kind of a background. So um, when I moved to the US, I had an opportunity to work in the US for some time. I used to uh, be based out of California. That's when I first time met people who were very, very successful. You know, I mean, 
at an aspirational level where i said man this is amazing in fact i remember meeting uh, an individual from india he was an in, uh, engineer used to work for atnt bell labs um, you know and uh, uh, started out as an entrepreneur after that and became very successful when i mean successful and i currently is annual revenue is uh, close to what 1 billion dollars one of the most respected indian entrepreneurs in the us and uh, that's the first time i got challenged i realized whatever i do in my career i will not probably reach at the level where he was already and uh, so that's the first time i started asking him how did he move up and suddenly i realized here was somebody who was already very successful and he mentioned that he continues to learn from other people and uh, who are you know more successful and uh, slowly over a period of time now it's been about 15 years back uh, you know uh, but if you really look at it today i realize every successful person out there actually has somebody who's a mentor i mean you know you might think uh, virat kohli is a you know absolutely fantastic guy i mean you know he is still as a coach uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know federer as a coach uh, amazon's uh, jeff bezos as a coach i mean if all these guys could you know think of having a coach i mean who am i i'm such a simple guy and i think it's a realization over a period of time so uh, so speaking of mentors and also speaking about moving towards you know, like those famous examples you mentioned all them have been successful in their own particular fields but for young entrepreneurs just especially for just young adults entrepreneurship or business is like wow it's something there man you know something we got to do something you got to be but then i hear this phrase common sense entrepreneur phrase by you or you know i was like wait a minute why it makes sense where did that come from do i want to know that <laughs> actually um, you know uh, like i said i never thought of entrepreneurship right i um, you know i just wanted to be successful my job and uh, also because i think i've never seen anybody who was successful as a businessman in my life you know from close quarters um so i did not really understand what entrepreneurship was um i in my mind it was very complicated maybe a lot of investment maybe you know it required a different kind of a thinking i thought businessmen should be very shrewd whereas i was a very timid guy and so i never thought that you know i can make it out in the business field but like i said when i met this person i realized he was a simple guy it's coming from a simple background coming into from india to a you know completely new country and becoming so successful and uh, so over a period of time when i started talking to him i realized anybody can be successful as an entrepreneur if he knows how he is going to add value to any cross section of society and if there is a possibility of monetizing and uh, suddenly dawned upon me i mean there are people who are high school dropouts who are uh, you know uh, uh, multi multi millionaires billionaires i mean look at somebody like richard branson i mean you know i mean you know runs close about 400 companies today he's a high school dropout and uh, you have uh, enough of dropouts from you know uh, howard and uh, yale and stanford you know talk about mark zuckerberg or uh, you know uh, you know bill gates and then there are also people like um, you know uh, jeff bezos uh, who are very very successful i mean these guys are you know well educated and things like that right so i realized that education was not a constraint and you know and most of them if you really study them most of them started with almost almost um zero investment they come from middle class families i'm talking about all the first generation entrepreneurs and i said oh if this is the case then maybe i can also learn about it and the more i started investing my time into learning i realized decisions which are common sensical are the one which really make a big difference because um, all through my you know entrepreneurial journey um, i don't see um, many things that i learned from my mba aiding me right it is about what those were the foundation i'll never discount studies education by the way right i mean you know uh, you know uh, if somebody were to ask me come and ask me hey indian i'm you know i think i'll i'll also drop out and i'll become like a mark zuckerberg i'll say no not required at all because um, you have enough opportunity especially when you're studying to uh, go and prove yourself that you know you're you're capable of doing it. because entrepreneurship the key to entrepreneurship is completion you know it's not about starting right starting anybody can do it you know it's a completion that matters you know in entrepreneurship so you've taken up something do that and take it up and 
So, you know, all small, small commonsensical things was a period of time that I learned. And I realized that's what differentiates actually, you know, between success and a mediocre person. And, uh, you know, when, when somebody like me who comes from almost nothing today runs a, you know, fairly, a very, very large business in uh, three different domains, I think anybody can do it. So that's where I, you know, thought, it, you know, maybe I should start, you know, guiding people based on common sense skill stuff rather than, you know, any theoretical stuff. So uh, I want to dive in just in that last point you made. So do you think maybe our understanding of entrepreneurship is why most young entrepreneurs fail? I think um, if you really look at it, um, most people make the same common mistakes. And uh, if we learn about entrepreneurship enough, or if we just think about, you know, um, you know, how these, how common these mistakes are, actually we can avoid them. So I, I personally think, uh, you know, um, it's, it's just a matter of, again, you know, applying common sense and, you know, uh, and see, that is where you, you will probably benefit a lot if you were to bounce off your ideas or have somebody as a mentor, a seasoned person as a mentor, right? Um, maybe I'll just take a minute here to just talk about one or two common mistakes that people do, right? I mean, see, um, uh, if you look at it, um, most people uh, do things that are personal to them. I mean, you know, they like it, right? See, for example, um, let's say, uh, you know, we were just talking to uh, Pratyush. I mean, you know, he was saying that uh, he's interested in art and fine art and things like that. That's great, fantastic, right? Now, will that fetch him, you know, an entrepreneurial opportunity? I'm not too sure. But unfortunately, what people do is, they pick up things that are related to them. See, for example, let's say, you know, um, he decides to do entrepreneurship uh, in the area of fine arts. What does he do? He picks up some, you know, um, he says, okay, let me set up a website. I'll, you know, buy from, you know, all fine arts people. I mean, people who are interested in fine arts, people who are painting or creating something, and then I'll sell. Now, the market for that could be very, very niche. And, you know, is there a market? Yes, but it's very small, very niche. And, it takes a long enough time for you to differentiate yourself and establish and, you know, make that kind of a money, right? For example, there's uh, somebody who was, um, you know, um, who had about 15, 16 years experience in the software industry. Uh, in fact, uh, she was working in IBM and um, I remember uh, she coming to me just after six months after she started the company. And, uh, you know, she was absolutely in tears because uh, her passion was, uh, you know, long drives. And she said, are, uh, you know, uh, this was before the lockdown, right? I mean, you know, about a year back. So she came and said, um, Indian, um, see, this is my passion. And, uh, you know, I heard this Steve Jobs saying, um, you know, uh, do what you love. And, you know, you know uh, that's what you have to be there. So I quit my uh, job at IBM and I started this. And I said, so what happened? You know, she said, see, uh, initial the one or two trips was very good because I was organizing, uh, you know, uh, long drives, you know, family started coming and then I, I was anyway enjoying my long drives and, you know, I just had to take people along. But slowly what happened was as uh, it started picking up, people started demanding the right kind of accommodation, the right kind of food at the right time. You know, people, you know, were not passionate about driving. They just wanted to go somewhere. And I became like a tourist guide. I was more, you know, talking to the hotels and our organizing stuff and, you know, a whole lot of, so there's a whole lot of administrative stuff, stuff I got caught up in than the passion of driving. Now, I don't know how I can scale it up, you know, and so people don't really extrapolate, you know, how they do it, right? Because there are three main areas people fail. The first place is they don't, ask themselves, is my business scalable? They confuse scalability and growth. For example, let's say I have a, a restaurant I'm in Bangalore and uh, let's say I have a restaurant in, um, in, in a posh place like Indranagar and I'm doing very well, let's assume. And now I want to grow. And so I open another, you know, uh, restaurant, let's say in uh, Koramangla or Malayshwaram. These are all nice locations. Now, the problem is, um, <laughs> If I had invested, let's say, 20 lakh rupees in my initial restaurant, in Koramangla, I have to invest another 20 lakh, Malayshwaram, I have to invest another 20 lakh. And as somebody who's a first time entrepreneur, how, how many 20 lakhs will I be able to invest? And everywhere, I'm going to scale it up right from the beginning scratch. And that's never, a, you know, that's not scalability. I might grow, 
but it's you know it's not you know it cannot be multiplied it's a linear growth look at an example like ola right somebody as young as you you know who got started and this guy uh, you know uh, created a community of about 200 uh, drivers initially and that was his most difficult period and he understood how taxis operate how drivers think and that's what his initial thing was he built all his you know uh, incentive plans and uh, the app and everything else while it was this about 200 people once that got done he expanded that 200 into 2000 and by the time he perfected his app and everything else it was ready for 20000 and then he expanded it to five cities where he ran it just for 6 months with 20000 people today there are five and a half lakh cars running under the banner of ola right now that scalability so uh see if you really look at it what you need to do is you want to create something which is a system right which is the foundation of the business and then you need to learn how to you know exponentially grow your business on top of it right that is scalability talk about you know look at uh, amazon right i mean they started with selling books but today i mean they are into everything right and you know so you will see that you know diversification possibilities you will see that scalability across uh, geography uh, geographical boundaries all of them is going to be a necessity right if you think about long term the second place where most people fail um, pranay is uh, about stability most especially um, youngsters <laughs> we get carried away by what's the you know hottest in the market right now um, in fact let me ask you this um, tell me tell me which is a company which has the highest revenue um, in the world which is a company which is the highest revenues this is not a quiz i'm i'm not putting you in a spot i'm just asking you like i personally think it's amazon right because they're the most uh, profitable or rather most uh, big company that i know okay That's take the I second think. guess sorry second guess take a second guess um i honestly have no clue <laughs> right um in fact most people come with amazon microsoft you know google you know uh, Uh, Apple, these are the normal companies that come up with, right? Um, but it's a simple company called Walmart, right? Um, Walmart is um, much much bigger than any of the companies that we just talked about. And what does Walmart do? Walmart is you know uh, you know it's simple retail. Home supply chain, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you know they are to retail. Now the problem is we don't like you know the word retail. We don't like you know uh, being think, thought of as a provision store. right it's, it's a supermarket it's a chain of supermarkets so we are more attached to what we are doing than the end result see for an entrepreneur it's always the end result that matters right he is always result oriented but most of us are passionate about what we do and that is a big mistake because today for example this uh, let's say the covid is there right i mean you know the you know the only uh um, uh industries that have not been uh, affected are you know that to do with the essentials right um you know look look at the essentials look at uh, healthcare these are the industries that have never been you know uh, you know affected everything else has got you know hit you know somebody could be running a multi crore uh, restaurant chain i mean they are hit somebody could be you know having a you know you, you know iphone uh, um uh, store on you know let's say you know uh, anna sala in uh, you know mount road in chennai i mean they are hit right now so you want to first your initial business has to be about stability right whatever happens your business should be stable and that's extremely critical and uh, the last place where most people make a mistake is profitability although you you might think are how come profitability are every i mean how can people make mistake no the thing is most of us think that hey when i'm small i'm making a few mistakes it's okay you know losses are okay when i grow i'll make it big actually no if you don't know how to hit the profit index when you're small when you multiply your losses also multiply unfortunately an example for this is our you know own indian grown you know flipkart right look at every other organization right? i mean you know uh, you know in the indian ecosystem why are all of us struggling because we thought that we will be able to fix the 
profitability index after we grew no if you don't know how to make profit when your sales is at 1 lakh rupee a month it is impossible for you to fix that you know ratio when you have 10 lakhs or 100 lakhs you know what i'm saying yeah yeah right these are the three But, places where most people make mistake and if somebody can be aware of these three things and fix it before they get started i think they have a good chance of success but uh, i like to fix it on one point where you said like you know for non entrepreneur it's about the end result which is in this case money which is let's say, let's face it that's what everyone runs after but right. how can entrepreneur be uh, you know passionate about something if he does something which he is not passionate about you know like you said it's not about let's say you are passionate about something you want to do it. let's even take your long drive example she want to do long, that's what she is passionate about but then that's not the business model which she is able to develop right now to get money so how do you bridge that gap oh it's 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 a very simple thing and again this this is a place where most people you know uh, uh, get confused see money is only a tool pranay right, right? Uh, you know money by itself is nothing uh, it's just a piece of paper if you really look at it right and uh, see for example uh, you know uh, if i give you let's say you know 10 crore rupees and lock you inside your room for the rest of your life you, you can have 10 crores but you cannot go out, outside of your room what would you you know prefer the 10 crores or uh, you know freedom outside well 10 crores won't have any value in that room so <laughs> absolutely now what you need to understand is before asking how much money i want to make in the business the more important question is to ask hey why you know what do i want in my life right see for example let's say in in my case in, in this is something that my mentor pushed me to find out right and i came out with five things in fact in fact this was after a lot of iterations right the first one was i realized i i coming from a middle class family i do not want recessions in my life so i said you know a life without any recessions anything that happens to the industry anything that happens to me the money should still come to my family so that was my first thing the second one was uh, you know i i have seen my parents work very hard i you know i you know i know i will you know have my own family i want to give them the best of uh, lifestyle right for me it was fine but i wanted to make sure that my parents had, had a great time my you know you know wife and you know future children you know they i wanted to give them the best of everything third one is i love traveling and you know uh, you know you give me uh, you know uh, 12 months in a year and i i can travel all around the world you know that i'm like that and but i do, i'm not the backpack kind of a guy and go and stay in railway stations and things like that i want to you know travel in class why not right i mean so i want to travel and for traveling you need both time and money right and um, finally is something which i've been very very close to my heart right from the time i was very young uh, you know when i was growing up is uh, i want to support and complete or you know uh, completely support an orphanage with about 200 to 300 children i remember uh, talking to my today which is my wife i mean they, at that time we were going strong steady and i remember talking to her and she said uh, indian with your salary i don't think we can even support two children you know what are you talking about 200 children <laughs> right it was more like a joke but then that's a reality right now since i said hey these are the end results that i want money is not the end result my ultimate reason why i wanted a lot of money for was your for these things so i started working for this and i asked myself what should i do which will get me money in a far faster and easier manner legal way yeah so that i can do what i really enjoy for the rest of my life and my entire perspective changed otherwise i'm a hr guy all i could think of was being a hr person i would have started a hr consulting firm i would have started a recruitment firm and i can tell you everybody you know in my you know friends circle who started a training firm or a, a recruitment firm except barring one or two have been forced to close it down and get back to the corporates right i hope so, i answered uh, your question yeah it kind of did, did so i guess uh, it's just a tool you can't look at it as the end result is what i got away from the end result is something else which you're chasing after rather you still haven't discovered yet for young people like me and so no actually, you... actually pranay uh, just to you know explain see for example there's a friend of mine who was extremely passionate about uh, engineering right in fact uh, he's from uh, rooki and you know uh, and um, he got to uh, one of the top uh, you know uh, research labs in the entire world run by gene right 
it's in bangalore it's called john of welsh uh, research labs and uh, this guy has six had six patents whose name very successful right but then he realized he cannot do research of his own interest while working for ge he had to do something else the only reason he was working for ge is because he could not set up a lab you know because the money was huge so what did he do he started as an entrepreneur made a lot of money and today runs his own lab on indi road in in bangalore he employs 20 other people but he does research on what he wants to do so it can, could be any passion but to set up the you know lab you want to use a simpler model which can generate a lot of income and you know there are thousands of ways in which you can do it you know it's not it doesn't require anything else because most people think for example if this guy had thought i want to use technology to make money and create a lab trust me for the next 20 30 years he could have done it yeah that's what i mean well then sir what about young entrepreneurs who are let's say just come out of college and they are trying to do their own business now obviously you don't have a lot of money you know but right. you still want to build a business and it takes some time to pick up most businesses do so how do you think right. they your advice for them to survive those first few years or anything they can do maybe see my first advice uh, prana is uh, you know uh, like i said if you're studying keep studying and do something on the side if you're um, you know uh, if you're just passed out take up a job take up a job for the next couple of years know that that income from the job is going to feed your business right see you cannot be a successful business person you know living off your parents income right you cannot keep every time you know you have to get hit you have the only way you will feel the pinch of money that you are spending is when you earn it you go out there you know work from 8 in the morning work till 6 in the evening come back 7 o'clock you start your business 7 to 11 11 to or 12 you know you stretch yourself go back to sleep at you know 12 1 2 whatever it takes go back to office again at 8 o'clock do that routine for 2 years you will see the value of money like nobody else you will see the value of time like nobody else that is a time when between 7 and 11 in the night become super productive because you you really are begging for that extra 2 hours of sleep and if you look at it every single person look at you know somebody like bill gates do you know that he slept only for 2 hours every night while he was building uh, you know microsoft he would just sleep sleep on the you know computer table right there and then get up and then start doing the work again right that's what it takes actually to build a big business if you're not ready for it i tell youngsters if you're not ready for that extra stretch don't worry about it entrepreneurship is not for you <laughs> simple yeah, it, it's simple yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of guts and perseverance and a lot of inner strength i mean it's not for everybody i i challenge people i say if you're a man prove it you know you know come on come on come on the field you know you face the people right you cannot go and say oh my you know brother is not approaching me i mean come on man if you're an entrepreneur trust me out of 1 lakh people if you have one person coming and saying okay you can do it i think you know that's an awesome thing you have to be ready to take that hit initial later when you are a brand the same people who said you know this will not work you cannot do it are the people who will line up and say hey can you please sign an autograph they say right when your exactly. signature becomes an autograph that's when you successful but that's that's going to take a lot of effort from you so sir uh, in conclusion i think if i can understand this in sense it's always about your attitude and what you want to achieve like having a goal dreaming big is good but at the end of the day you have to know how to get to that goal but and you can only do that if you are willing to do it yourself sometimes it's more sacrifice sometimes you can feel like you yeah, are my friends are having fun they're partying but it's okay that this not their dream this is your dream and you want to do it. so uh, for your final thoughts on this topic sir so you know see um, i'll go back to where we started pranay i think this is where a mentor will extremely help you because sometimes you cannot run on overconfidence for the entire uh, stretch you have to have you know uh, the right kind of information as well and lot of times when you are passionate about something you are not willing or you're blind to the negative points out there and when you have somebody who is a seasoned person you know it becomes a very very you know big strength for you quick thing the mistake how you know why 
people you know how to find uh, you know uh, entrepreneurs um, you know mentors for the you know for yourself first thing ask yourself if you want to be a batsman star batsman will you take guidance from sachin tendulkar or harsha bogle i hope it is sachin tendulkar <laughs> but unfortunately most people take from harsha bogle i have great respect for harsha bogle by the way but unfortunately he has never been on the cricket pitch and faced somebody like a bretley or somebody you know at that time right you you know i mean just because somebody is from i am and you know speaks great english does great analytics about cricket does not qualify him for your coach or mentor whereas such a talent could be somebody who's a 10 standard fail but man he has a records to talk about so if you are you know willing to do that groundwork and talk to people find the right kind of mentor there are enough number of people who are very successful who are willing to open minded to talk about it i mean you know i i'm always encouraging youngsters and i'm open minded if somebody is you know uh, really thinking that they have what it takes to be an entrepreneur i think i'm there i'm game to you know coach them but you know trust me i'm going to demand enough from them to you know make sure that they prove themselves that they're ready for it yeah wonderfully said and i will definitely be looking forward to you know hopefully uh, having as a mentor for some of my future projects if you're willing to and uh, well and i hope the viewers feel the same way as if well if things work out pranay i'll be glad if i can add <laughs> thank you sir i hope the viewers feel the same way as well and so thank you for doing this sir thank you so much Well, that concludes the interview, and I hope you really liked it. It was really enlightening for a guy like me who is a quote unquote young adult. Because again, we're neither young nor adult. So it's important for us to, you know, if you want to have an entrepreneurship or rather want to start a business, for us to know and to hear from people who have been through this, been through the pitfalls of this age. Maybe we all can be successful. Why not? So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you liked the video a lot. And if you did, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much.